The first day of the London derby between last season's two promoted sides belonged to the visitors Surrey, who made the most of the conditions in the LV County Championship match at Lords. Winning the toss and deciding to bowl first, Rory Hamilton-Brown would have been hoping for early wickets, but Sam Robson and Joe Denley got Middlesex off to a steady start. Middlesex lost their season's opener thanks to one bad session in Taunton, and they were looking to put that to bed against their fiercest rivals. It took Surrey until the 11th over to claim their first scalp, John Lewis doing just enough with the ball to induce the edge off Joe Denley's bat with 33 runs on the board. Surrey are the form team in the LB County Championship if you go back into last summer when they won their last four games before disposing of Sussex on their return to the First Division at the Oval last week. Initially, they found things to be a little tougher here as Robson and Chris Rogers threatened. Stuart Meeker was left out of the Surrey side and Jay Dernbach was eventually the fifth bowler to be used by Hamilton Brown. But when he did come on with a bandage covering his latest tattoo, he got the big wicket of Rogers, leg before for 20 at 66 for two. Middlesex twice defeated Surrey last year and so they would have not been too fearful even after losing those two wickets. After a rain shower held play up after lunch, Robson and David Milan kept their side in a good place with some neat strokes. But then Surrey came storming back into the game. A thrill Tim Lindley knocked out Robson's off stump after he'd battled to 40. Dernbach got some bounce to bowl Neil Dexter off the edge for one. And then next ball he forced John Simpson to edge to Gareth Batty to leave Middlesex in some trouble on 91 for five. That was soon 108 for six as Gareth Berg paid over a full length delivery from Lindley to go for 11. Surrey now had the momentum again and it took some hard work from Milan and Oli Rayner to try to get Middlesex to somewhere creditable. Milan, as he often does, looked a class act when playing shots such as these. Lewis is enjoying the start of his new career as a Surrey player and he produced a good one to bowl Rayner the fourth Middlesex player to hear the crash of timber so far. Now on 129 for seven, Middlesex needed someone to support Milan, who was still there. In fact, Tim Murta did a bit more than that. He is a man capable of scoring important runs near the foot of the order, and he was proving that here with some attacking stroke play. In partnership with Milan, he added a very valuable 53 for the eighth wicket, just what the doctor ordered for the home side. A slog sweep brought about Murta's downfall after he'd made 31. Batty, the man with the wicket. But Milan was still there and playing well. Before play, he'd shown Darren Goff his skills of juggling a golf ball with a sand wedge. And he was no less skillful as a batsman. His 50 was the key innings of the day. It was a patient half-century coming from 143 deliveries, but one which his side desperately needed. Without him, Middlesex would have been bowled out cheapy like so many other sides batting first on this day. But thanks to him, they were able to surpass 200. They would have been disappointed to lose Toby Rowland-Jones in the penultimate over as he edged Chris Jordan to batty to go for 16. But Surrey were unable to claim the final wicket, meaning that Middlesex will resume on day two on 225 for nine, with Milan still there on 62.